I saw you once, Maddie Schwartz. Before any of this began, I saw you. I was, you know, living with you both in the recent days, you know, like a, in this atmosphere of the show. And it's quite, it's quite dreamy. And at the same time, it's a thriller. It's, it's quite tricky. It's foggy. You know what I mean? Like, a, I wish you could talk to me a little bit about this. Like, how did you feel in the atmosphere of this show? Not only in the set, but, you know, psychologically. Because I think the psychological, you know, point of view is so interesting as a woman. I don't know if you mm. agree with me. Uh, yeah, I, I, it was the atmosphere of the set was very intense, mm -hmm. emotionally intense all the time. Um, I mean, Alma created an incredibly inspiring, positive set, um, and she really encouraged us to um, to bring our s surrealism into it, our mm -hmm. subconscious, our dreaminess. So there was this um, mix of very intense emotionality, very mysterious, dreamlike mm -hmm. circumstances. And then, of course, the incredible costume design and and set design and music. And um, there was just so much atmosphere of of the time. So mm -hmm. it was it was a wild and amazingly fulfilling experience. Have to agree. <laughs> How did you know? Know what? Where to find her. You know, it's like, like a... I speak again as as a woman. I really like. I don't like, but I like the the show. It's not about only murder or mystery or thriller on war. It's also about how women have been punched since ever for dreaming. You know, mm. something that should and like a Maddie doesn't have any support. You know, to dream and also, mm -hmm. you know, Cleo she cannot dream to just live her life. You know, like everyday life, just surviving. Both of you are only surviving, even if the circumstances are different. So I wish you could both talk about this. You know, it's a still a current story, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. Women are so much more than the roles that we all play. You know, I think so often, you know, <laughs> women are told what their place is. And I think even more so uh, for Maddie and Cleo, um, in the 60s, I mean, you see Maddie try to sell a car and she can't, right? You know, so um, I think it's always, always, always like so important to remember um, that women are also singular beings with minds of our own um, to make choices for ourselves, agency for ourselves. Do you agree, Natalie? And talking about oppression. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think that, um, you know, women are so often demanded by the many roles they're supposed to play to cater to the needs of others and to serve other people's dreams. And it is um, a, an act of, of courage to pay attention to their own dreams and to pursue their own dreams. Um, and it's often called selfish or, you know, uh, ruthless or overly ambitious. It's often criticized. Um, and so, you know, you see both of these women really pursue writing their own destiny and not being subject to the demands of the time. This is not your high school newspaper, Maddie. You know, Noah, um, your character is one of my favorite characters because I think uh, you are in the middle of a big dilemma, isn't it? Like, is it family? crisis but it's also a, there's also a bigger picture so how was for you you know like a this challenge of you know being yeah. yourself in the yeah I think that um I think that Seth is is really really going through it <laughs> like a pretty much all the characters in the show are all going through something wild but um for Seth yeah I think he's like his world as he know as he knew it is is crumbling around him and and sort of everything he had to hold on to for safety or for security is sort of gone um and i think as a kid 
trying to be an adult that's a very scary thing to sort of come to terms with and so yeah I think he's pretty lost and pretty sort of unsure of himself but I think that like any teenager he he you know tries to push that down as much as possible and sort of replace it with anger and frustration and sort of you know rudeness um but yeah I think that he's an absolute asshole but but at the same time I really love him and I really feel a lot of empathy for him so it's a cool character it was a cool character to play alive I was Cleo Johnson but in my death I became the lady in the lake yeah, but but in a way, I I can understand him in a way. Let's say because he's the new generation, he could be much forward, like his mother. But she's not a perfect mother. She's a mother good enough, you know, mm -hmm. like good enough mother, like a real mother, yeah. let's say. Yeah, yeah. But at the same time, he's still attached. It's to the old generation, his father generation. So how do you see this? You know, it it's in the sixties, but. Yeah. In a way, it's a still, you know. Yeah, actual. I think that he, I think that he's got most of his sort of passion from his mother, and I think he looks up to his mother a lot for, you know, she she she's a little bit of a dreamer, and she's she's more, much more creative than than his father, and she's much more, you know, spiritual and 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 alive, and I think that Seth's got a little bit of that in him too. And he he loves it, you know. I like when it, I imagine when his like mother used to read him bedtime stories. It's like you know, I had it with my mom, and you just you get that sense of dreaming from your from your parents. And so I think that he loves that from his mother. But then, obviously, he's getting to an age where he he want he's trying to see the reality of it all, and he's trying to um, be like, how am I gonna? you know maximize my life and and make sure that i have the best life possible in this pretty cruel world and i think so then he's getting a lot of it from his father and then his mother ups and leaves and follows her dreams and the stuff that he's been told his whole life isn't possible and is just a dream and she goes and follows it and i think for him he he finds that hypocritical he finds it like like why wasn't I allowed to do it if you you can just do it and you can just go and run away and and break apart this entire family so I think he's yeah he's pretty heartbroken by it I think um and definitely that sense of dreaming that sense of passion is being lost within him to the sort of the cruelty of of just like uh you know just just not believing in anything yeah it's life itself isn't it it's yeah uh, yeah it, it's he's growing up isn't it? he's coming of age very tough yeah. one but you never wanted to do anything else i never tried to do anything else did you ever wonder why and for you how was to work with natalie especially in but all the crew but you know natalie your mother yeah. <laughs> i mean we had um we had an incredible cast as well. Like the people we were working with, um, everyone is just like at the top of their game um, actors. And it was so good to see. And that's credit to Alma and credit to casting directors, everyone. It was like, I felt very, very excited to be part of that, that crew. Um, but I also think that, I mean, I mean, it's, it's Natalie Portman. It's kind of, it's kind of ridiculous it's it's crazy um and yeah it she's but she exceeded expectations in a lot of ways because uh, there's a certain point where you're like it's it's Natalie Portman because she's this person you've looked up to your entire life and you've seen in all these wonderful movies and then for, to meet her and to see that she is also an incredibly interesting and exciting person who is very humble and kind is like that's the coolest thing ever and the most impressive thing ever because you're like you've done all of these incredible things and you've still, you still you still have a personality you still have like this exciting thing about you and you you still have this passion for what you do and I think it's so cool and so getting to see that in person getting to work with her um, which was a dream. She, I mean, she's like the dream scene partner. Um, it taught me so much. And it was like, 
I need to still have that passion, you know, down the line. I, I need to keep keep that and have what she has. Um, and yeah, she's awesome. Your writing dreams ruined your life. Now you wanted those same dreams to rewrite it. But why did you need to drag my dead body into it? You know, Alma, you know, I, I knew your work and I knew your work in Free the Work. You know, I remember oh, wow. you, we're talking. Are you a director? Women. You know, I'm also a director, but um, oh, I work okay. with the women in cinema in Brazil, the project that you were ah, talking about, remember? Hey. It was, I think, in the pandemic. So, and I, I remember you so well in that conversation talking about, you know, equality, women rights, workers, yeah. creative workers, right? So I was watching the show and it's so dreamlike also, such a, interesting noir subverted noir i would say yeah. and i was thinking it's all so coherent with who you are you know what i mean like the woman the professional the director the creator so i wish you could talk a little bit about this because i think this show sums up in a way you know encapsulates the person you are as well you know what i mean i don't know if you agree but I felt like this. I mean, it's definitely, first of all, I think you said it better than I can say it. So I think you should write your words. I don't know if I can articulate it any better. I I, I, I think it's a, definitely an aspect of myself that sums up the past few years of experience I had uh, being a woman director and uh, trying to, you know, make my mark and tell my story while also dealing with the illusion and the reality, both of, of identity and gender in America and the disparity also between um, Jewish people and Black people and my own relationship with it, my own personal relationship with it, because my partner is Black. And he plays uh, Slappy Dark Johnson. His name is Baron Bowers. And so all of those things definitely have uh, emerged as material <laughs> that uh, worked with this show. I'd like to think there, there are other aspects to me that are belong to the eternal and the marvelous and that are beyond gender and identity, you know, and I actually always have done so much work in my 20s to move away from seeing myself as this body and move away from seeing myself as this identity and to commence with, you know, what's beyond all of this, you know, and and connect to, um, you know, the eternal and the marvelous and, and the spiritual. And it seems that the world claws at you sometimes, you know, and pulls you down to again and again deal with this skin. So um, I think the show is about that contrast. Um, again, I don't, I don't know that it sums me up, but it's definitely an aspect of my existence on this earth. <laughs> Dreams push you down. But and it's different from your other works, which I love it, you know, like different in a good way, like the atmosphere. I was talking to the actors and Natalie and Moses about the atmosphere because I felt in that fog, you know, and all of them, they quite cherish the atmosphere you created. And it's also about oppression. And and I liked the phrase that you, you Natalie quoted about oppressed people can be also oppressors. Of course. How do you see this, you know? Because it, it's, it's quite the nature, intriguing. it's in a way the nature of trauma, you know, is to when it's not getting worked out, it actually plays out with other people. So I am less surprised by it in some ways, but I am still in awe of it, of the cycle of, you know, the cycle of it. So especially with what's happening right now, obviously. Um, so it's a cycle, you know, it's a cycle of pain that travels through the world that will never stop until consciousness gets expanded and consciousness can only get expanded actually by practicing empathy, you know, and, uh, and practicing the understanding of the other forces that all of us are, are operating under that make us enemy, makes us enemy to each other. So it's, it's a lot of that is in the show. As the, the character of Shell Gordon says, it's not the ballot or the bullet, it's the bank. You know, it's like the, the people out there that are making money from uh, fragmentation, from separation, from uh, 
racism, from lack of, of unity. We can go into the streets and fight all you want and demonstrate all you want, but until there is a, an expansion of consciousness that doesn't lead to more racism and more violence, then it's just going to travel. Yeah. It's great, the story connects us and connect the characters, isn't it? The women. Yeah, women are definitely, uh, and we see it now, are like, when you're watching this, I mean, the circumstances maybe have changed, but the feeling of living these uh, in this in these bodies are are the same, and the violence towards women's bodies, both by, um, you know, men, but by the state, you know, by the state wanting to control women's bodies all around the world, is uh, is is not has not gone away. Uh, women are are fighting for abortion in many countries around the world right now. To dream the impossible dream. You know, and so different from the atmosphere of the show, you know, like for me it was like a trip. It was very foggy and dreamy and at the same time surrealistic and, uh, and at the same time very realistic. And so I'll begin to asking you about this. How did you feel yourselves? each of you in this atmosphere that Alma created, you know, like the story and also the visually, how mm. visually it's you, you felt in the story. For me, I was, you know, I'm going off a of paper as a storyteller and I, and I consulted on this project, but I'm always amazed. And it's a trust thing because what I visualize and what she visualized as the master looks totally enhanced right like if i'm doing if i'm seeing the scene and it's like what a movie would look like she's imax or you know one of those things so i'm i'm definitely amazed at what she's able to build once once we build once we build it and we're done um that her editing process is crazy and we all look good but but because of her you know yeah i think that was something um that Alma did a just brilliant job at creating atmosphere. Um, we didn't shoot a lot on the sound stage, so a lot of these places where we shot were the real place. Um, and I think that added to the texture and the fabric of what you're seeing. And as the actor in that in in those moments, um, you have no choice but to be one with the authenticity. A lot of the lake scenes, it's me in a lake rowing a boat. I'm actually in a boat. You know what I'm saying? So. Um, it felt truly um, t tangible um, and visceral while filming. I mean, <clears throat> it's a lot of what they said. I think that whenever you have an experience, you know, shout out to our, our set designer, JC Molina. Whenever you have a, an experience where, you know, you show up and the scene looks like it, you would imagine based off of what you sort of been daydreaming about in your mind and it has the different trinkets of what it looks like, you know, in a, in a, in a, in, in an office and you got like the cigarette lighters and everything is from the sixties and like that, that just helps, you know, there's less acting that needs to be done when you have these same tangible elements. Um, so yeah, I, I, I've, I'm, I'm thankful for that. Yeah. You know, I come from doing theater in the black box and you creating everything imaginatively. So to have these pieces given to you, is uh is a blessing you know where the brave dare not go this is my quest to follow that star i'm, I'm asking this because you three are you know you're not perfect each of you each of the characters but you're not walking stereotypes you know you like i, I can feel your people living that you know, atmosphere. So that's why I asked it about it. So I wish you could also talk about this. How do you relate, you know, to the reality of each character? Because it's also a current story, isn't it? Talks about our current world, you know, racism, yeah. segregation, you know, violence, but also dreams, isn't it? I think coming from my environment, um, where stand-up is like shunned, um, and fighting through that. I was the first to graduate from from college. And my family, uh, you know, uh, second generation out of the projects and graduated with an engineering degree and said, I'm finna go, you know, tell jokes. Uh, they didn't really like that. Um, and I had to fight and through my own 
family environment and community environment to even get to a place. So, and I consulted on this project. So a lot of my story is in, um, in this, you know, my, my ex-wife who was also an engineer, uh, didn't stay around for this to see the, the, the finished product of what this, this vision was. So, um, and it, and it's good to, to tell these type of story in a grounded way of what a comedian's or some entertainer's life is really, really like. So that's how something that happens in the 60s is current for myself, you know. I think uh, I related most to Reggie um, with his determination. Um, his determination is so... It's so it's so it's so impassioned um, that that passion misguides him. Um, his loyalty misguides him. I mean, I think um, we are all, all of us um, are flawed people across the globe, um, and I think that sometimes what happens with closed-minded perspectives about groups of people like. Um, the Jewish community or the black community specifically in a place like Baltimore at this time. Um, I think it's easy to just put a stereotype on a certain person or a certain group of people. And I think that's what happens um, between Maddie and Cleo, whereas the world already is putting on all of these expectations, um, assumptions on Maddie and Cleo individually. And this story shows us that they're more similar than they are different. Yeah, and, and for me, I think one of the characteristics that I related to the most about Ferdy was he finds himself as a, a bit of a of a loner. I think his his open mindedness is interesting in that it made him, you know, a little bit alone. And he his 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 space of solitude is something that I could relate to. His like feeling of not completely belonging to any particular sort of space. Uh, at times, in particular in my childhood, is something that I could relate to and I found really intriguing to play. Every time someone turns up dead in that lake, it does seem to lead to you. 